um, COVID-19 uh, hit our planet hard, right, in the beginning of this year, and it had a grave impact on the interpreting industry. And I will not repeat what she has just said already, uh, but yes, it is really true. And uh, it um, really had significant impact on us, but that's bad news. But the good news is that we survived, that we pushed through, that we learned a lot on our way, and that we adjusted to the so-called new normal. So the idea of my presentation today is to draw some conclusions from what we did, to look back at our journey, and to formulate some good practices and tips for uh, those of you who are just starting their online journey or are in the middle of it. So I hope that these tips will be helpful for both the professionals and the aspiring new uh, colleagues. So what did we learn for one year of working online? So Anna already uh, presented me, so I will not repeat her words. So who am I? Um, so let's go straight to business. Uh, the first lesson I would like to share with you is about backing up. Uh, those of you who already have some experience in online remote simultaneous interpreting know this well, I'm sure. Um, I will not now uh, repeat everything I'm uh, telling usually about uh, the equipment because I think that the, the, the major parts of equipment are presented here and probably all know this very well already. But the important, I think, uh, the important thing about online interpreting is that you have to protect yourself from anything going wrong. So there is always room for uh, technical glitches. And uh, to safeguard yourself against all such uh, unpleasant uh, possibilities, you have to back up. So what can you do to do that? First, you can install the redundant internet line uh, so that uh, your router can switch uh, from one internet uh, connection to another in case the first one goes down. And it really can save your life sometimes. Then it's a good idea to have a spare laptop or desktop and also headphones or headset and microphone, just in case, you know, um, they uh, are, do not function when, when you need them. Then um, also it's a good idea to have a UPC device for all plugged in equipment so you can survive a small blackout. Um, some of them can even work for several hours, so it can also really save the day for you. Then the next advice I can give you is that uh, you have to learn to assemble different setups for different purposes. And it really depends on uh, whether you need to have camera on, for example. You have to decide that in advance. Uh, if it's a consecutive assignment, then probably your client would want you on the camera. If it's a simultaneous one, probably not. But you have to um, talk with the client beforehand uh, to know uh, that you should or should not dress up, you know, put your put your makeup on and uh, the place of your apartment to any, where you need to assemble your setup. Then that's the first consideration. The second one is whether you need or not the second device for handover. And we will speak about that later in more detail, that there are setups of which you need one and for which you do not. Like an RSI platform, uh, on such platforms you can hear your partner usually, so you would need any second device. But if it's Zoom or any other um, configuration, then probably yes. Then um, what did I learn also during this uh, year of working online is that it's better if you can assemble different setups, um, different 
places of the apartment because it will depend on the time of the day you're working like you don't want to uh, work in your bedroom at night right if you're not living alone or or near your kids room if it's also night time so you have to take all that into consideration so what else did we learn? Um, and probably most of you already know that there are several recite options uh, you can use. So the three, there are three basic options for remote interpreting are uh, RSI platform. And I would recommend to use RSI platform if there are many languages used at an event, if there is a relay required and it's a large project. So uh, you will need project management. Also, there is Zoom, uh, if there are only two languages, no relay, and if it's a really simple project, you can handle yourself. And uh, if uh, there's another option, any messenger or video conferencing system, if it's one-way interpreting. So, so these are the main criteria, I would say, for choosing inner set options. So that's important because when you're speaking with the client, uh, so very often they're asking you for advice so the client uh, doesn't know which option is best which option suits best uh, for uh, their purposes and that's where you come in so that's where your expert knowledge would be very helpful then I would say this of course uh, preparation is key and really crucial for all assignments and uh, so there is no need to talk about it that's, that's really evident but I would say that for online assignments preparation is even more important um, the point is that uh, the sound quality when you're working online you is usually poorer and it's uh, common knowledge now uh, because of you know uh, lack of headsets uh, and technical glitches etc uh, you cannot uh, see usually the speakers so well as you can when you're working on site so um, sometimes you have to fill in the gaps because you can miss a word or two you can miss even uh, several of them but if you know the topic well if you did your homework if you have the materials in your hands then you can easily fill in the gaps but for that you need to prepare for each assignment really well so um, that's also another argument you can use when communicating with your clients uh, when asking them for materials right uh, you need to say once again that materials are really important because so sometimes I cannot hear you well. So to be able to interpret well, to be able to provide smoothly running in one event, please provide me with all necessary materials. Then uh, also the this is um, maybe not so evident aspect of our work. That's why I want to draw your attention to it. Um, time zones. As you know, uh, now, uh, since we're working remotely, we can work anywhere. Like this is maybe the, the best and the most popular argument used by uh, RSI, uh, those who like RSI and RSI platforms, right? That now there are no geographical limitations and uh, living in Russia or Ukraine or anywhere you can work in Europe you can work in the US etc but you need to remember one thing that there are time zones and if you're given an assignment that takes place in Europe for example you need to know that the European time differs from your local time like there are a lot of um, time formats the most popular of them are listed on the slide, but this is um, by no means an exhaustive list. So there is a CET, for example, time, like this is the main, maybe popular um, time zone, Central European time, right? Uh, there are UTC, Coordinated Universal Time, that's the time of London. Uh, and there are also ET, Eastern European time, 
uh, ET, this is the American time, Eastern time. So you have to remember about this and um, always be able to uh, recalculate the uh, this time of the assignment into your local time. Not to be late, not to be too early, you know, so to be on time, not to miss the assignment, which of course, nightmare, I would say, of a remote interpreter. And I think that uh, every one of us, at least once, made this mistake. And I also did it. I confused ET with ET. You know, they are really um, quite similar. The, there's only one letter, they differ. And um, uh, luckily for me, it was not an assignment, it was just a meeting with my US colleague, but I came, uh, as you can see, six hours early. So beware. And there are also, of course, a lot of other time formats, like more exotic ones. For example, ones I had in the China time. And you can and you can have a lot of them. So beware. Then um, you're already probably also familiar with this issue. Um, that working online, we all have to be technical engineers uh, to some extent. Of course, there are technical moderators, of course, there's technical support, and I always require technical support from all my clients because I'm not able, you know, to provide everything, to provide both interpretation, technical support, you know, it's just possible. Uh, but still, uh, there are some things you can manage only on your side. So you are responsible for your own equipment, for your router, for your internet, uh, for your microphone, that everything is connected as they should. And uh, if something goes wrong here, so only you can uh, you know, change your headset or you can uh, um, reboot your computer or your router. So in some respect, yes, we have to uh, be technical engineers. So that's a fact. Mm -hmm. And you can see this is a, a funny picture here, a meme from um, lockdown period, I would say. Um, and um, there's a Russian saying, you know, uh, that there is a part of joke in every joke. It means that, yes, of course, it's a joke. No one uh, ties their children to the floor to be able to work, but there is some truth in it because, uh, especially during lockdowns, uh, right, when um, the whole family spent their time indoors, but the uh, parents had to work, they had to, you know, uh, handle it uh, any way they could so that they can work, actually. And that's an important aspect to think about when you're working online, uh, time and family management, right? So you have to organize a quiet, isolated working space for yourself and uh, uh, preferably a door with a lock, right? If you have small kids or maybe uh, some pets at home, or if you are just not living uh, alone, it could be a good idea. And um, also think in advance about what your family is going to do uh, when you will be working, like arrange their time, especially if you have children once again. And uh, ask for help. You know, you all always can ask for help, uh, your partner, granny, or if no, there is no one but you, then you have to have someone like a nanny or some help at least and teach teach your family, teach your children uh, to behave when you're busy. That's, that's also really important because at some point uh, the kids as well can understand that, but you have to teach them. Um, and another important um, aspect we had to learn how to handle is interaction between partners online. Um, and I'm speaking about handover now. So I already mentioned this uh, issue um, about uh, being able to communicate with your partner, right? If it's an RSI platform, then the second device is not needed for that. You can hear your partner well and you can communicate with them uh, via chat. Um, but if it's Zoom, um, 
uh, if it's a video, audio call, WhatsApp, or any other messenger, then um, you will need the second device and the second pair of headphones to be able to listen to your partner. And also, uh, you will be able to communicate on the chat. So that's just what you have to consider when you're taking an assignment. And also, of course, um, most of you know that interaction with your partner uh, when we're working remotely is much harder, of course, because usually you don't you not see each other. You can um, listen to each other sometimes uh, more easily if it's an RSI platform, sometimes using some um, second device solutions. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated, but still it's not the same as sitting in the same booth, right? Uh, so that's another thing you have to consider and get used to. Um, then, um, since uh, online, as I already mentioned, um, is uh, always connected with some technical glitches. I mean, there is always a room for something going wrong and uh, including internet connection, because if even if you have two internet, uh, Ethernet lines, even if you um, did everything, backed up everything as I advised you before, um, always something can go wrong and you have to consider that. And that's, I would say, another argument for you when negotiating with your clients for requiring a partner for yourself, even for short assignments. So I would recommend to work only with a partner online, if, even you know, if, a, if it's a one hour assignment or even less, because this way you can mitigate the risks. When you're working remotely, the risks are always higher. Um, then we are coming to the part about protecting our interests as interpreters. I would recommend to put everything into writing. So just draw up a special contract for online assignments uh, with provisions related to what happens if something goes wrong on the tax side. It's really important to talk about and think about in advance because, uh, you know, the client has to be aware of this possibility. And if something goes wrong, if you cannot deliver interpretation, not uh, by your fault, uh, then you are still entitled to be paid in full, right? But to uh, get this payment, you have to include this provision into your contract and to uh, talk about this with the client in advance. Then that's probably the part that can be, uh, you know, that can be different opinions about. But that's my personal feeling about online assignments. I really don't feel well if I take more than two assignments per day. Well, of course, it depends on the type of assignment because there are clients you are working with for years and probably you don't need to prepare for them so much. You already know everything. And there are new clients, there are really complicated assignments you have to prepare uh, for a lot of time. So it depends on which assignments we're talking about. But still, I find that taking more than two assignments per day is really tiresome. So, uh, you have to take into account the fatigue of uh, working online and also uh, the time you will need to prepare. So put, uh, keep all of this uh, in mind when you're agreeing to another assignment on the same day. And also an important aspect as well is the possibility of time overlapping. Um, it can be a one or two hour assignment according to the agenda, but it easily can turn into three or even four hours. Of course, sometimes you can predict that if you know the client, if you know the type of event, but sometimes not. And uh, well, I don't know, there can be different solutions here. You can maybe uh, warn your next client about this possibility or not, to take this risk upon yourself. But just, it's a good idea to know about these risks you're taking. And then we're coming to pricing. Uh, this is a also very sensible area. 
I would say, for all the interpreters, right? But I'm lobbying the interests of uh, interpreters here, so I would recommend you to stick to your standard rates. It means that do not go uh, lower than your standard rates. Um, I know that some uh, colleagues even uh, raised their rates because online is really more stressful than offline work, but at least do not go lower uh, and do not give in to the well-known arguments like you don't have to go anywhere, you don't have to prepare, you don't have to dress up, you just switch on your computer in your slippers and you're uh, interpreting because that's not true, right? You, uh, I mean, yes, you don't, you don't have to go anywhere, but you still have to prepare to the assignment and it takes exactly as much time as it did before. And for the reasons I already ex uh, explained, so it is really even much more stressful. Then uh, I would recommend to stick to the same rate concept that is half chain full day rates. I think in this uh, turbulent and uncertain times, it's really crucial to stick to industry standards now more than ever. Though we see that there are platforms and um, other companies are trying to push uh, hourly rates or to pay by the minute. You know, there are even such proposals now, but that's not in our interest. And I think that you can all agree with me that just this is just not in our interest. And if we agree to receive an hourly rate, what does that mean? That means that we need to take not one, not two assignments, two half day assignments per day, but eight to get the same payment. And but is that really feasible to take eight uh, hourly assignments per day? I would say, of course not. Um, and another consideration to take into account is that you need to remember to include the test calls into the project price you're giving to your clients, because um, in most cases, the clients require uh, sound checks in advance. And that's a good thing, really, because uh, that sh it shows that they really um, want to make sure that the event is smooth and everything goes right, that the sound is of a good quality. It means that they will check their speakers in, in advance as well. But still, it's your time, so it's not an argument for you to push this uh, full day and uh, half day rates because you can always say that um, this um, project price includes a sound check which usually lasts not less than one hour so um, it's just another argument um, you can use mm, then uh, you know when all this story with remote interpretation started a lot of my colleagues were really worried um, about becoming this really invisible interpreter, just a voice, you know, uh, the client hears and nothing more. I mean, when we're working on site, uh, they can at least see us. So we're, we're, we're sitting in the physical booth, they can see us and we can communicate with the audience. We can speak with the speakers, with the clients. Mm, so they see that we're real people. We can establish some, uh, dialogue with them, uh, some relations. But when we were working online, many colleagues were worried about becoming this invisible interpreter, some just like a machine, you know, a voice. But I found that that is not true because I found out when the remote interpretation became mainstream, so to say, um, that I could bring more, even more value to my clients because I could offer uh, not only interpretation services, but consulting services. Most clients, when the uh, pandemic hit us, they were not ready, of course. They were not ready to go online. They didn't know uh, how an online event can be organized, how to set it up. And um, some of them still do not know. And this is where we can come in. We can consult them on the technical solution preferable for their event, on the interpreting type, 
uh, we can educate our clients on the required equipments. Uh, and here we can, you know, press our case about uh, microphones for all the speakers. We can rem remind the clients that they need to do the sound check in advance. And what can we do uh, as well? We can contract interpreters and we can manage the project. Uh, we can even train our interpreters, uh, our colleagues to work on a specific platform. Uh, we can check their equipment and the sound. And of course, we can receive the payment from the client and provide the payment to the interpreters. So that's uh, what additional value we can bring to our clients. And I find that due to this additional added value, um, clients uh, really uh, value us more. So that's a way to become even more valuable to your clients nowadays. A couple of words about marketing. Uh, when also this story with remote interpretation started um, and interpreters uh, were suddenly out of work, uh, what did we see? A lot of marketing on mm, social networks, etc. Uh, interpreters for advertising their services. That's quite understandable. Um, but I think that um, here to uh, really stand out, uh, you should think not about yourself. So think not how can I promote myself, but think what useful can I do for my community and for my clients. So if I have some extra knowledge, if I have some experience, uh, I can share it. So I can share it with the, my clients and with my colleagues. So how can I make uh, the life of everyone easier? So if you bring some value, some information um, that is really valued by everyone. So and that's the best way I think to promote yourself in the end. So just the uh, secret is not to think about yourself first, think about someone else first. And then we're coming to uh the end probably of my presentation so the uh if you still have free time you know after you did everything that i just mentioned that I, I really hope you do but we all had of course a lot of free time in the beginning of the years but still you know uh so the advice is quite evident use it use it well so uh, there are a lot of uh, courses and programs now. The continuous professional development is really a, a hot topic today. And there are much more possibilities now than, than we had before the pandemic, because everyone went online. So there are a lot of master courses, there are a lot of industry courses, everything, actually everything you want or need, you can find online and you can uh, learn uh, online without the need to go anywhere. Uh, if you have some time you want to practice more, you can join dedicated training groups like PIPS, IBG, Amerivox, Interpreters Weekly, uh, and exchange feedback with your colleagues. And of course, if you still have some time, and I hope you do, uh, it's really important not to forget about yourself, because if you do not care of yourself, then who will, right? So rest sport and sleep as simple as that and that is the end of my presentation i hope my recommendation and pieces of advice and some good practices i try to um formulate will be uh, of help to the interpreting community so these uh, these are my contacts so i'll be happy to talk to you answer some questions later if we do not have time now for that. So uh, thank you for having me and I will be really happy to take any questions now from the audience if there are any or maybe someone would like to share their experience, there some practical uh, tips of advice that you can give. So over to you Anna and Victoria. Natalia, thanks a lot. That was really a great presentation. And it is only true to say that you have been the real evangelist of remote simultaneous interpreting, at least in our part of the world, no question. And now I guess it's the turn of the audience to ask questions, to make comments. Anybody? Anybody? Has it been so comprehensive? 
okay, then I'm going to have a question. Maybe then somebody is going to ask more. Well, what I have noticed in this era of remote simultaneous interpreting is that we don't have as much seasonality of our work as we used to. Because before we used to have pretty much dead January and of course dead August. But now it just seems that the work never ends, especially given the fact that many events have been postponed from 2020 to 2021. And as the budgets are already allocated, the client still wants to actually hold them. And that is why we end up working all the time. I just wanted to ask you, have you noticed that in your own uh, working patterns? Thank you. Um, yes, I did. And yes, I also noticed last year when we had, you know, no, practically no work in spring and the beginning of summer, but then the work uh, was coming back. And in autumn, I think that uh, we had so-called so double season, like all the clients who were postponing their events were um, actually learned how to do that at last online. And they were holding them. And then, uh, as you said, yes, this season, was not ending um, yes and we also we also uh, in Russia noticed this lack of seasonality but probably now in the end of July beginning of August there is some um, some break at, at least some partial break in the project and also you know you um, probably that's another the topic of another presentation really about um, managing uh, the workflow and uh, uh, setting your priorities, right? I mean, uh, you have to rest, you know, you don't have to take all the assignments that come your way and you really deserve a summer break, a vacation. So I hope that um, you also will have one after you take. Yeah, absolutely. We still have to prioritize our work and we have to achieve that work-life balance, even though sometimes it might seem practically impossible. Are there any questions from the audience? Yes, there is one. Anya, please. I'm coming. I'm coming with Mike. Yes, and just an announcement for everyone who is asking questions. Could you please stand in front of the camera so that our speaker sees you as well? And I wanted to remind you that uh, after Natalia, we are going to have a presentation by, by Dmitro Krzyzewski on technical side of RSI. And after that, we have a dedicated half an hour for your questions and for, and for discussion on RSI. So if you have questions by that time, please come back. Okay, uh, Natalia, first of all, thanks a lot for your uh, wonderful presentation. It was very comprehensive. That is why probably not uh, many questions uh, uh, that we can see. Uh, but I wanted to ask you, in your experience, uh, uh, do many clients use uh, like specialized interpreting platforms uh, or do most of them use Zoom? Um, thank you. Thank you for the question. Well, um, like many colleagues know, I'm working a lot with RSI platforms, so probably my point of view is not so objective um, because um, I'm working mostly on RSI platforms, but I know that um, the uh, private clients prefer Zoom for obvious reasons. And uh, I also conducted a survey together with Konstantin Tranch and Naomi Bowman on COVID-19 impact on the interpreting industry. And we had a question there about the preferred uh, RSI option. And it was about, you know, 80%, I think, for Zoom. So more than 80% of interpreters and clients are using Zoom now. Uh, thank you. Are there any more questions from anyone? Yes, Anya, please. Anya? Uh, hello. Thank you very much for your highly insightful presentation. And I would like to refer to one of your statements you've made. Uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, nowadays clients tend to depreciate or devaluate the labor of interpreters. And th that's my personal experience because, you know, uh, very often our moderators even present interpreters as function of interpretation. So interpretation is available. No real people behind uh, the curtains. So how would you recommend recommend us uh, to increase the engagement, to become closer to our clients, to show that uh, we are human, that we are people working there uh, behind the scenes. Thank you. Uh, thank you for 
a very interesting observation and that's true i can absolutely relate to that and i um, even heard such you know comments about automate automated interpretation is there automated interpretation in zoom available like some people even don't know really that there are uh, Alive people working there, they think that that's AI or something like this. Well, my advice would be probably to um, communicate more with your client to show your clients your value by providing additional services like uh, consulting, so really showing your expertise, your uh, things that you can do apart from interpretation. I uh, can uh, uh, give uh, your clients pieces of advice on technical side, I mean, the equipment, uh, and uh, maybe provide moderation of the events and help with the technical support. Um, and if you um, who presented the uh, presentation of Maha, probably you heard this also additional services uh, you can offer. So I think that just in increase your visibility by providing additional services, by uh, increasing the added value you can provide to your client. Natalia, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for answering the questions. We really hope that you'll be able to join us sometime next year that is going to become possible. And for now, let us give a round of applause to Natalia Fedorenkova. Thank you so much.